Hey folks, it's Saman once again. <clears throat> Welcome back to another review. This is the last of the reviews for a very nice guy named Love to Eat Puss 79 who has sent me quite a few films. And he had named about five films that he wanted me to review of that. And this is the last one, and that is Bad Influence, a film from the early 90s, particularly 1990, and stars James Spader and Rob Lowe. It's directed by Curtis Hansen. Now, Curtis Hansen, I'd recognize the name. And Curtis Hansen is the same director that would go on to make films like L.A. Confidential, Eight Mile with Eminem, The River Wild with Meryl Streep and Kevin Bacon. And those are films I've seen once a long time ago, but I don't barely remember them. But watching this film again, I thought it was okay. I thought it was an alright film. It's more of a drama thriller type. I thought it was an alright film. I liked it because of these two guys. Rob Lowe and James Bayer I thought did a really good job. And that's really the main reason to see it. If you're a fan of either of those actors or both of those actors, then it's worth a look. Pretty much James Woods is a shy, quiet guy. He's a financial analyst. He's working for this company. He has this asshole who kind of fucks with his files, and he, he wants him back, but the guy won't do it, and to pretty much screw over James Spader. He has a fiancé, but you get the idea that he doesn't really want to get married again. He really wants this uh, to impress his boss, played by John Delancey, who is, I believe, Q in Star Trek The Next Generation. And... You know, all this stuff is going on, and then he goes out to get a drink one day at the beach. And this girl is, like, fumbling around looking for money, and he's being a nice guy. James Spader is a good guy in this film. He's a nice guy. And gives her some money to help buy this drink. And the girl's asshole boyfriend comes in, and James Spader stands up for himself for a bit. And the guy starts to fud with James Spader, and Rob Lowe comes in and defends James Spader. And they strike up a friendship. And pretty much like the title says, Rob Lowe starts becoming a bad influence on James Spader. Starts telling James Spader, hey, you need to stand up for you, yourself. Pretty much, you know, stop being a pussy. You know, this guy who took your file at work off the computer, you know, I, I respect him because you stand up for yourself. You need to stand up for yourself. He even pisses off uh, James Bear at one point, and Rob Lowe goes, yes. You know, that's the face you need to have when you stand up for yourself talking to this guy. And James Spader does, and lo and behold, he gets his files back and starts going up. Uh, a little bit more successful. Uh, takes, uh, Rob Lowe takes James Spader to this bar. Which for a split second I see David Duchovny, it's like a blinking you miss it, like 1001, what the, before you get the second two, he's already gone. It's like, wow, David Duchovny, like when Rob Lowe and James Bayer get to a bar, there's David Duchovny like right behind them, got hair greased up and glasses, hard to recognize, but I'm like, that's David Duchovny. And it's just weird that he has a blinking you miss it cameo in 1990. And then a few years later, he would have the X-Files, which became such a big thing. And I know there's a new X-Files TV show being made. Hopefully it doesn't suck as much ass as the last movie. I want to believe that it's good, but then it sucked ass. But that's another story. Uh, and uh, Rob Lowe gets Jay Spader, this girl, played by Lisa Zane. Lisa Zane would go on to play Freddy's daughter and Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare, after this film. One thing leads to another, James Banner have sex. It gets videotaped, and Rob Lowe is even watching. And that's what you do, like, Rob Lowe is a, kind of a twisted guy. He's watching Lisa Zane sleep. He's watching the sex tape while James Spader wakes up and realize that whoa what the hell happened he was so out of it he didn't realize that he was being filmed Jay Spader even takes the videotape and shows it to 
James, I mean, uh, Rob Lowe takes the videotape of James Spader having sex with Lisa Zane to <laughs> James Spader's fiance and her parents all watching at a party and Rob Lowe even says, I'm doing this for your own good. And pretty much, again, sort of wanting, I mean, the title pretty much says it all. It's a, being a bad influence on James Spader. You get him drunk, so drunk that they go out and they even rob some convenience stores and, you know, makes James Spader believe that he beat up this, the guy, the asshole guy at work who it took you to find in the first place. And one thing at least you know that James Spader doesn't want to deal with it anymore and Rob Lowe really turns up the switch. Lisa Zane gets murdered and Rob Lowe makes it so that James Spader is going to be the guy holding the bag that all evidence is going to point to James Spader if James Spader doesn't get with the program with Rob Lowe. And you're kind of wondering like why is Rob Lowe doing this? I mean he doesn't really have a motive and the fact of Rob Lowe's not doing this for money. He's not doing it for revenge. He's not doing it for um, really anything other than to fuck with James Spader or to keep James Spader in his place and Rob Lowe sort of keep his power over James Spader. And it's pretty much James Spader getting the help of his brother. Uh, I forget the actor's name, but I know he was on the TV show CSI Miami. To pretty much uh, help him out and set things right and you know stop Rob Lowe. And the reason I gave the whole plot away is I like the film okay. I mean, if you go into this film, they just don't be anything with action or physical shenanigans, fisticuffs, or anything of that nature. That's not what this film is. It's more about just these two guys and most of the stuff that I mentioned. I mean, it's. It's not like a lot of stuff actually happens in a way. I don't know how else to describe it. I mean, I mean, even the comeuppance, it's pretty much James Spader's brother follows Rob Lowe to his club that he's at. Rob Lowe realizes something's up, tries to kill James Spader's brother, but he gets away. James Spader wants to kill Rob Lowe, and James Spader's brother goes, no, don't start your car, because I uh, haven't really seen this done in a movie where a pe he, Rob Lowe broke the tail light and then put a piece of the tail light, the wire, into the actual you know, gas tank that you, you know, fill up your car, so if he backs up or something, blows it up. It pretty much James Bear gets to Rob Lowe, threatens him, runs away, gets Rob Lowe to where he is. Rob Lowe admits to what he did, and James Bear's brother had the video camera. Rob Lowe comes after him. James Bear rises up, shoots Rob Lowe in the shoulder, goes off. Kind of a lame comeuppance because it's hit in the shoulder and don't find a body. So did he die? Did he not die? But it doesn't matter because they got the videotape footage and. Jay Spare is going to bring it to, you know, the police are, are coming there. It's just, it's not a lot of stuff is happening. I don't know how to describe it. I mean, that's why I think it's a, it's an okay film because of the performances of Jane Spader and Rob Lowe. Those two work well. Uh, Lisa Zane does all right, but there's really nothing much to her character. She's pretty much there to have sex with James Spader and then you tell that she had a little thing with Rob Lowe before all that and then Lisa Zane gets murdered by Rob Lowe. The brother character James Spader he does a little bit of stuff like he was arrested in the past for drugs and he always borrows money from James Spader but the guy who played him did a good job acting wise. It's actually written by David Coop. Coop. Which, if you look the guy up, he's written a lot of films. David Cope. 
I mean, it's one of those films that's hard to talk about, so it's not going to be that long a review compared to other reviews of them because I pretty much said the whole thing. And James Spader does a really good job. I really love James Spader as an actor. Uh, that's what interests me the most in the new Avengers movies, that he's going to be the bad guy. I love Jack's Bat, which, again, is getting a Blu-ray from Scream Factory, which is coming out probably around September or such of this year. Uh, James Spader, I wish he had done a lot more roles. I mean, that's why I could say I like this film, because I like James Spader's. He's, he did a really good job in the role. He's a good guy. And uh, Rob Lowe played a great a villain. You know, he's a guy who you can understand why people you know, like him. He's got a bit of charisma to him. You can tell why women flock to him and why he can hold sort of that, you know, evil type of power over folks. But I, I'm wondering if this is around the time where that sex tape with Rob Lowe came out, which I never saw, but I've heard about. That kind of, I think, kind of, I don't know if it was before that or during this. Maybe it was before. I, I don't know the exact year. But I know that it was just a little bit of a scandal that hurt his career, at least for a little bit. But uh, I don't know if Rob Lowe ever got to play that many roles like this. Which is a shame because he did a good job with it. I mean, I remember him in Wayne's World. And you see him in comedies like I think Tommy Boy. I was in Tommy Boy, right? But can't think of too many that he got to play the villain role. But Rob Lowe did a really good job. He was menacing. He was believable as a villain. And as this guy who really wanted to show that deep within each of us there is an evil part of us. And he brought it out of James Spader. That sort of you know, being bad to get what you want. You know, that sort of thing. And, you know, I like the idea behind it. It was a decent enough pace that I didn't get too bored with it. And I've said this five times now, but the two leads are really the best part of the movie, Bad Influence, the two leads. I know I'm not selling the movie that much. I know by you know, 13 minutes in, I'm not selling the movie that much, but what I'm saying. All I can say is look at the trailer. If the, you like the trailer and you like these two actors, it's well worth a look just for those two alone. Again, if you're looking for a thriller that's going to have a lot of humongous twists and turns, or a lot of physical stuff going on, and a lot of stuff happening left and right and center, that kind of a thriller. It's not really the case. More of a, I would say more of a low-key thriller, to be honest. But it's still not a bad movie at all. Only has a trailer, which I can understand, because not many people talk about the film. That's, an, that's one thing. Not many people talk about bad influence. So... I don't think it's worth that type of obscurity. I definitely say I remember liking this more than some of Curtis Hansen's other films, like the ones I mentioned before. Which great, I don't remember too much about them, but I do remember enough to know that I remember liking this a bit more than those flicks. But hey, if you're a James Spader fan like me, this is well worth a look. And in him and Rob Lowe, played off each other pretty damn well. I thought they had some good, a little bit of chemistry be between them. But uh, this is just my short, to, compared to what I usually do, short thoughts on bad influence. Um, again, the reason I reviewed it is because a nice guy named Love to Eat Puss 79 on here sent me this and wanted my opinion on it. But overall, thanks for watching, take care, and we will see you later. Bye-bye.